guess what color his Chevy truck is. <laughs> no, I didn't think of that one. That's from the comments on Reddit. I can't believe this. High school seniors graduation ruined by dad because he did not want his daughter to shake the hand of the black staff member during her graduation. I would have knocked this guy out if I were this dude. But he probably had no idea what the hell was going on, why that guy was up there, and people in the comments on Reddit are already saying, why do these racist people all look the same? And somebody said, guess what color his Chevy truck is? So I'm going to see if people put in their votes. But uh, father of a Baraboo High School student in Wisconsin storms the stage to stop a black school district superintendent from shaking his daughter's hand at her graduation ceremony. And you can tell. This girl looks mortified. Absolutely embarrassed. Here she comes. Oh, oh. Excuse me. Where's Brandon? Get away from me, bro. No, no, no. Hey, no, no, no. Hey, you need to get paid. Get away. Get away. You got to get away. Right now, you are Where's Brendan? Who's Brendan? Jesus, and she's trying to tell them to be quiet. Don't tell them to shut up. It's their graduation. And good on them for cheering the fact that they got this asshole on the ground or whatever the hell it is they did with them. Okay, okay. Who's up? At least they all appall uh, applauded for her anyway. You know, crap like that. I'm surprised that it wasn't dead silent when she came out, although she did look very embarrassed by her dad's actions. And, of course, you know, people are like, how do you know this is about racism? The uh, superintendent has, or the school has a uh, restraining order against him. I mean, this shit already happened. We're just seeing the video posted now but um seriously though do you have to wonder what it was really about <laughs> baseball cap and doors sunglasses mirrored sunglasses the polo shirt the khaki shorts <laughs> He should have stopped the daughter instead if that's what he wanted. Still a silly move, though, but she still graduated, so it's not ruined, actually. Yes, it's ruined. It's ruined for that man. What are the chances that girl moves to, like, San Francisco or Santa Fe, becomes a socialist, and never talks to her dirtbag father again? I'm going to say 75%.
I'm sure she's embarrassed either way. Well, I'd never be speaking to my father again if he were like that. Honestly, the polo and sunglasses on top of the hat scream the same thing as his actions. Surprised he didn't drop a tiki torch on the way up. Talk about selfish. What a damn psycho. Take your goddamn hat off inside. And if you told me this was from 60 years ago, I'd have believed it. How are we still so backwards as a society? They're not backwards. They wear polo shirts now and mirrored sunglasses and baseball caps and doors. They're totally with the times. Don't you see that? They just vote for the 50s guy. I heard no slurs, no aggression. There are other black people present. Seems like it was toward the one superintendent who happens to be black. Yeah, you're only seeing what you want to see. You really need to explain what about this is supposedly misleading. Even more fucked up that almost nobody did anything or acted like it wasn't okay. They probably had no idea who he was or why he rushed up on the stage like that and just grabs this random guy and pushes him out of the way. I bet this punk is a Christian too and a false one at that. What a loser. Name and shame that POS. Article says his name is Matt Eddy. <laughs> he wanted to belittle the man in front of everyone. Well, he belittled his own daughter. And you can see her face go from excitement to disappointment so fast. Disgusting actions. If I were the daughter, I'd go up and take a photo with the superintendent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd do that too. Okay, this wasn't race-related. Blah, blah, blah. Former district teacher who worked in the district, district prior to Briggs' tenure had voiced numerous complaints against Briggs. Force a recall election. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. That doesn't sound like it's anything this random guy would go up there and shove him away for. Shitty title and no backstory. Do you think this idiot actually went up there over this? That this guy has showed favoritism towards school administration, providing inadequate pay and support for teachers. And he had fired the middle school principal. That's the reason this guy jumped up there and put his hands on this guy? because he doesn't want his daughter shaking his hand at her own graduation? Yeah. If 
found the Trump voter. Sure, he works in a gun store. Sales increased 50%. While the reasons behind Eddie's actions remain unclear, social media users have been slamming him as they accuse him of ruining his daughter's special moment. And you know what? The school has a history of racism. Black student recently won a federal lawsuit for racism and harassment from students and staff. More than half the people there are neo-Nazis. This whole district is racist. The parent was taken in for disorderly conduct and nothing will happen to them. This is how they raise the children in the area with hate. At least he put on his best ripped up baseball cap and tactical sunglasses for his daughter's graduation. Look. The main thing here is he jumped up on stage in the middle of his daughter's graduation just as she was crossing the stage to receive her diploma, put his hands on this guy and shoved him away so that his daughter would not be able to shake his hand. She looks very embarrassed. This is a girl who knows exactly what kind of piece of shit her father is. And knows full well what this outburst from him is all about. So. Ugh. Do I have a hair? Hmm. Convicted felon. Seen in the wind gap this morning, southbound Route 33 made me smile. Good. Who wore it better? That guy, actually. How would that drive me? <laughs> As a dog lover, I want to tell you this is disgusting and evil, what you signed off on. And these experience, experiments that happen to beagles, what does dogs have to do with anything we're talking about today? Is that the June picture in Christy Nome's calendar? Oh, my God. Yeah. That was a fiasco. Swalwell says, if you believe in states' rights except when a jury in that state convince your nominee for president, you might just be in a cult. I demand his words be taken down. Swalwell keeps going. Good. What is <laughs> yep, here it is again. Unnamed attacker was a father who didn't want his graduating daughter to shake the hand of a black man. <laughs> And just remember, all of these people are going to vote. Ooh, there was an attempt to explain what woke means. Let me guess. She can't answer it.
And even everybody in Reddit knows what it means. Marxism. Society is based in pitting people against one another. It comes from Marxist roots. She's completely wrong. Oh my fucking god, this word salad. Okay. What does she say? I want to hear her say, you are completely wrong. We're here for love. Ha ha ha! I hope you get a lot of clicks for that. Oh, I will. You bet your ass she will. And that's why we're all watching it right now. They fucked up and changed a simple word with a simple meaning to something they can't even describe. Woke definitely has a meaning and they can describe it. Woke means, I don't like that and I need a word to rally my mindless peers behind my hateful cause to exterminate anything I don't like. It's not so much that they can't describe it, more so that if they accurately described it, people would see them for who they actually are. Holy shit. This guy hit the nail on the head. This guy is quite a genius. That's exactly what that is. You see it a lot with people who are disingenuous or people who are just pieces of shit. Asking them to define the word woke is probably a uh, one of the best ways nowadays that you can see this type of thing in actions. She probably, and I'm giving the benefit of the doubt here, I'm assuming she's not special, which would mean that she's purposely fumbling her words and uh, giving... Uh, a disinformative response to that question, purposely skewing the meaning. Because like this guy said, if they were to describe it accurately, people would be on board with it and think they're a piece of shit for being against it. Uh, so rather than be truthful rather than really sit back and think long and hard about what exactly it is about the term woke that you really don't like, no matter what that reason is, because you're going to be asked this question, and if you have any integrity, uh, if you have any balls, you will own it. 
You will explain what your problem is with it. You will own it. Even if it doesn't sound PC, even if it sounds completely the opposite of everything that is good and holy. But they won't do it. They won't do that either. They're not going to say, I don't like woke because I don't like these people. I don't like those people. I'm racist and I'm sexist and I'm misogynist. And I think certain people shouldn't have any rights at all because I think they're pieces of crap. I think they're vermin. I think they're pests. You know? They're not going to say stuff like that. They're not going to say it because they know how wrong it sounds. So they will sit there and they will give an incorrect definition to a word or a phrase. And this is why these people are total garbage. This guy's absolutely right. If they accurately described what people are asking them to define, people are going to know what type of person they really are. If you're all for it, be truthful. Own it. It's like with these religious freaks. You know? Uh, I always used to say, you know, you're supposed to throw stones at people who work on Sunday. You're not supposed to wear mixed fabrics. You're not supposed to shave your beard. You're supposed to be praying all the time and whatever other bullshit is in their Bible or their versions of the Bible, and they don't do half of this shit. And I keep saying, please, please do this shit or attempt to do this shit. Please do it. Please go out and do everything like your precious Bible says so we can have each and every one of you lock the fuck up and never have to worry about dealing with you again. They're never going to do that. Uh, they know better than to physically attack people or try to murder people because of uh, what their Bible says because they know there are consequences. If you're so gung-ho on what you know God wants because, of course, uh, you're the one that God speaks through, supposedly, then you should have no problem doing any of this stuff. So why don't you go out and do it? If all you need is your God, if that's all that matters is judgment from God, you should have no problem facing whatever consequences other men, people, are going to throw at you. You're supposed to suffer all the slings and arrows so long as it's in service to your God and your religion. But you don't want to go out and do that kind of shit. Why not? Because all these people fear the punishments of this world more than they fear the punishments of the next. They'll act pious They'll read their Bible all goddamn day so they can tell you how bad you are for not following it. But they're not going to follow their own holy scriptures because their asses will end up in prison if they do. And that's something they don't want. So God doesn't really mean very much to them at that point. Um, and that's why these people are full of shit. They've got no integrity. They're not honest with themselves or others. And uh, this is why they're total pieces of crap. And
And this is exactly why people like this are pieces of crap. They can't define the word woke properly. Because if they did, they'd look like a total asshole. She did throw out Marxist a couple of times. Nothing but a buzzword to these fools. They couldn't define Marxism if you put a dictionary in front of them. Woke came from the black community originally. But as you know, black people cannot keep anything. The term was hijacked to mean whatever they want to define it. I hear these conservatives use the term communism and it pisses me off to no end. This isn't any worse than our grandparents using Red Scare back in the 60s or the Russians is coming back in the 80s. The problem is the absolute incorrect way of using the term. I get it. Their supporters are dumb as a bucket of rocks, but holy shit. Yeah, this is really fucked up too. Because they hate communism, but they all love Russia and Putin. My grandfather is probably churning in his grave right now. Just doing full-on gator rolls. If any of these World War II, Korean War era generations were to see this shit today, they'd be spinning so fast in their graves you'd have to slap a Kenmore label on their tombstone. It's so fast. Fucking, it boggles the mind. Boggles the mind. They hated communism so much. Russia was, uh, it might as well have been a, like a four letter word back when I was growing up. Now all the people that say they hate communists Suck Putin's ass. Make it make sense. <laughs> uh, I gotta find this shit. I gotta find that stupid... Marjorie Taylor Green bitching at Fauci like she actually owned him or something. How much have you received in royalties from pharmaceutical companies since the pandemic began? Zero. Uh, I don't know if it's here anymore. I saw it this morning, but... Might as well go here. Just so, you know, these idiots have no idea. MTG probably has no fucking idea how long Fauci has been in this game. Fauci has been, Dr. Fauci has been 
advising the White House and presidents since back in the 80s. He was the one that started opening people's eyes regarding HIV and the AIDS epidemic. He was there through the Ebola scare. And he was here during COVID. There is absolutely nothing that he had ever suggested or brought to anybody's attention that had anything to do in any way, shape, or form with enslaving the American people or trying to take away their rights. This guy, this guy has been fighting tooth and nail for decades throughout my entire life and beyond to help educate our presidential administrations and all the people of our country about the dangers of some of the most deadly communicable diseases we have faced in our modern era. The nerve of these people's asses to just play games with them. Fuck around. This three toes green asks him a question, doesn't even let him answer. Just says, I don't care about your answer. She actually sat there like she was owning this guy. Like she was getting one over on him. This guy who got like nothing out of any of it. I, I, I doubt three toes green can even spell the word disease. And then she won't call him doctor. She had this thing, you're going to be Mr. Fauci to me. And I know he really doesn't give a shit, which is why he didn't say anything. But he should have, just to piss her off. Say, where you're concerned, the title is doctor. You are to address me as doctor. It is always doctor to you. And then he should have told her he deserves the title of doctor because if she burst in the flames right there, and I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet, not that it would do anything to ruin her appearance anyway, he'd still do his best to try to save her life because that's what medical professionals try to do if they're worth their salt. And I think Dr. Fauci is. And that's why it's no bullshit with him. And she's just fucking embarrassing. Lady, you won't believe me no matter what I tell you. He doesn't need to say that shit. Now this is the definition of a witch hunt. It's not a fact-finding discovery hearing. That hearing isn't even for Republicans. It's for the voter base watching at home. Waste of taxpayer dollars just to virtue signal their continued commitment to hating all things associated with the left despite the fact that Fauci also advised Trump when COVID hit. Probably revenge for the fact Fauci was trusted more by the American public than Trump was after the pandemic hit. Fucking Trump got almost a million people killed, didn't he? This guy has made a career. More than half his fucking life has been dedicated to researching, to studying, and fighting against the worst diseases we've known in the modern era. And be that bridge between the CDC and all the researchers and the White House staff.
man, he, he is way too good for this bullshit. But these people are right. You know, that's that's all it's really about. That's all it's ever been about. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. This bitch Neanderthal MTG, she, she couldn't stand toe-to-toe with him in a civil discussion about diseases and antibodies and viruses if her life depended on it. She just wants to bitch and yell and whine and cry at him and, you know, because she thinks her supporters at home are going, woohoo, she's really got him. And, and it's pathetic. You know, her supporters at home wouldn't understand anything either. I dare say most of them probably wouldn't understand anything better than she herself would. And yes, I'm uh, insulting everybody that likes this Neanderthal bitch because I I don't think she'd pass the GED test if we gave her one right now. And I believe she's a high school graduate, and I mean that. If you gave her a copy of the GED test, I don't think she'd be able to pass it. They're acting like the six feet thing being ineffective was some kind of conspiracy. A novel virus was spreading. So they relied on the oldest knowledge of how droplets spread to be able to make some recommendations on how to protect yourself and others. As tests were done and more data on COVID came in, more changes were obviously implemented based on recommendations. Same thing happened with masking. That is not some type of conspiracy. That's called science playing out in real time. Of course, that's why conservatives don't get it. Not exactly big on logic and education. Not for nothing, but your issue is you think people know how the scientific method works. In these people's minds, if a scientist changes their minds or learns something new, then that means they're a fraud. Yeah. They've all learned this shit in school. It's like... It's like when my uncle says that he doesn't believe in evolution. Didn't you do the peppered moth experiment like in seventh grade? You know, uh, seventh grade meaning like 12 years old. You were supposed to understand this concept before you even became a teenager. And uh, in case you don't understand the peppered moth or you don't remember it, that was an experiment that's that was based on a, a real-life event that happened quite quickly where people lived long enough to physically observe uh, biological changes in little white moths due to all the soot in the air from during the Industrial Revolution over in the UK uh, at the turn of the last century. They used to have all these nice light bark trees and all these little white moths. And the reason the moths were all white is because they could land on the bark of this tree and birds couldn't look and see them sticking out. They were camouflaged. Uh, that was the moths' adaptation 
to the environment so that more of them could survive and live to pass on their genes and have offspring. They blended in with their environment. And then the uh, Industrial Revolution came along and all these factories were blowing smoke and soot and ash into the air and it started coating all the vegetation, all the grass, all the tree leaves and the tree trunks. And yes, evolutionary changes take, they can take millions of years to develop. Or many, many generations. When you're talking about insects, you're talking about a million generations or more for every one of ours. So changes can be observed in real time like in our lifetime, if there are enough changes to the environment, which is what happened in the UK during the uh, Industrial Revolution. As more soot filled the air and more ash and dirt and whatnot started coating the vegetation, something really weird started to happen. The moths in the area we're no longer hatching all white. They were white with gray patterns. And then before long, they were all gray. And then they became gray with black patterns. And then they turned black. Because within a few short years, uh, all of these little white moths would now stick out like a sore thumb on this tree bark and all this vegetation that is now darkening to black. Now any bird or predator that goes by and looks will be able to pick them out and all of them would get eaten and they'd all die. So nature intervened by gradually darkening their colors by generation so that they could do the same thing that they did when the bark was light and they were white moths. They got darker and eventually became black moths. And these are environmental changes that weren't even natural. These are environmental changes that were uh, ushered in by man. It still affected their environment. So these creatures had to change in order to survive. They had to adapt or else they weren't going to live to pass on their genes. And this is something that people saw in real time in their lifetime and subsequent generations saw an entire species of insect physically transform. And that's what evolution is. That's part of the system of evolution. And the peppered moth experiment Sometimes they use stickers, sometimes they use jelly beans, it's whatever. They give you like a white piece of felt. And there's white jelly beans and black jelly beans. And your partner is supposed to shake them like dice, drop them on the white background, and you're the bird. So your back is turned, and you're supposed to turn towards the sheet, and quickly pick off what you could see. You're the bird that's got to look and grab its meal in a split second. And of course, with the white background, you didn't get any white jelly beans. You picked up the black jelly beans. 
with the black background, you didn't pick up any black jelly beans. You saw and picked up the white ones. The camouflage works to protect you. And that's what the peppered moth experiment was. Based on real events, seen and recorded and studied in real time. Uh, with AI, you can also get a good uh, understanding of how evolution works. And again, they use insects as a reference. I wish I could find the video, but this guy had this very simple program. It was like a like an 8-bit type of thing where um, he put in a series of bugs. They look like typical flies. And um, uh, the computer program had a series of all these fly-like bugs. They all look the same. And uh, what he wanted the program to do was get them to multiply just slowly, like once every five or ten seconds or whatever it was, make it so that two of the flies, you know, in pairs breed and they have a brood of so many flies. And... Um, I think he put in for gradual changes in the background color of the screen or something like that um, and told the program to make tiny, tiny little changes to each subsequent generation uh, so that it will work best for its environment. And he just let this program go on and he just let it go on for a couple of days, you know, like the equivalent of uh, so many thousands of generations of these insects. And uh, he checks back on it and the, the offspring after like a thousand or so generations of these basic looking flies these offspring are just unrecognizable uh, as the original fly. That computer program, it created so many different subspecies of insect. I mean, some of them didn't even look like flies anymore. Some of them looked like spiders. Some of them were bigger, some of them were smaller, and really weird-looking bugs. That's uh, an AI program that I'm not even sure if it was teaching itself or if it's still just meant to teach you about how evolution works. It's easy to uh, understand the concept when you're talking about insects or any type of life that, you know, uh, has a billion generations for every one of ours. And it's fascinating. But I thought he suggested to inject bleach with a syringe so it could kill germs from the inside. <laughs> Trump actually thought if you can kill viruses on surfaces with bleach, then why can't you do that inside your body? The issue is he was on national TV and he was supposed to be our fucking president. Serious question. Since when did medicine, science, and public health become associated with the left? It's fine by me. Like I said, they couldn't even begin to understand most of the shit that goes on scientifically. 
Like I said, three toes green probably couldn't even spell the word medicine if you paid her. The right is hostile not to just medical science, but science on the whole. My best guess is that it started about 50 years ago when the GOP hitched their wagon to the evangelicals. Once they had a science skeptical voter base, it was easy for them to get on board with things like climate change denial, which ultimately serves their masters. Uh, let's be honest here. The politicians are the masters. They're just in that position because they can get payola for doing things for the highest bidder. It doesn't have to be evangelicals. I mean, if uh, blue-haired feminists pooled their money together and paid this Neanderthal bitch a couple of million dollars a year, she'd dye her hair blue and call herself a feminist. That's how much of a piece of shit she is. The one thing ideological authoritarians cannot stand are other people with authority. Well, other people with intelligence, panache, charisma. As a result, a common trait of all of them is to attack intellectuals and academics. Oh, here we go. Do you know how many people in medicine are conservative? <coughs> and do you know how many people in medicine do not believe that the world is 6,000 years old or that there was a great flood about 5,000 years ago, pretty much all of them. Pretty much all of them, conservative or liberal, would not be a scientist. They would not be in the medical field if they believed the earth were 6,000 years old and all that other Christian right bullshit. Ha <laughs> ha ha! They wanted a few good men moment where he breaks down and declares he funded the Chinese to develop COVID to release it and kill Trump's chances of election which is insane. But I thought the virus wasn't even deadly and Fauci and the liberals claiming it was just another ploy to stop Trump from being reelected. But also Trump was reelected and the election was stolen by Joe Biden. But also Joe Biden has dementia and can't string together a coherent sentence. Yeah, <clears throat> we get it. We get it. None of it makes fucking sense. None of it makes any sense. And that's why these people are complete garbage. That's why you never trust these people. You don't listen to these people. And never vote for these people. Like I've said before, it's time to get adults back in office from one coast to another. It's time for adults to handle things again. Get rid of this garbage. And that's all I'm going to say.